With us today we have uh, Ewald Kramer, uh, the R&D manager of uh, the Dutch company Ferrari and uh, one of the original authors of the uh, RIMBA technology matrix. Um, could you tell us how you actually came up with the idea of that particular matrix? Well, we had the, uh, the Dutch uh, um, RIMBA uh, club, actually, a few people who already had uh, experience with uh, implementing uh, messaging. And um, at a certain moment, we decided to exchange our ideas. And it occurred to me that most of us shared some ideas, but we were also different in some aspects because we had different starting points. Some of us had a truly uh, newly built reference uh, based on the reference model database uh, and uh, we actually at that moment had an uh, existing database but we also had to map to, to messaging so we came from a totally different background still I realized that at some point we had to produce HL7 version 3 messages so um, although we had a different starting point we came up with the same um, IDs so um, then I thought if I just make a map with all the different positions where we could start out from and all the different positions where you could end up, then somehow you could draw um, where, you, uh, where, you share, where you can share IDs. Sort of a uh, express a navigation path as to how you actually have implemented all of this stuff. Given your knowledge that you have today of various other implementations and various approaches, that Let's say you had a customer that had uh, well lots of money and you had total freedom in choosing whatever approach you wanted for the creation of um, let's say an electronic healthcare record system or some other uh, medical information system. So what approach would you then choose? Well I really like the, um, uh, the RIMBA or actually the, the original JavaSig solution. Um, because you use the metadata available in MIFs or, or, or models to, to, to create your message and to, to, to parse them again when, you, when, when, when they get in. Well, you said when you have a lot of money, and that's, that's, that's an important starting point, because at this moment there aren't that many off-the-shelf products that you could use. And seeing that a lot of IT companies now start to realize that building something like this from scratch is uh, costly and will you you'll have to maintain this so a lot of IT companies will say isn't there anything in the market no then then we won't take the whole uh, rim based solution because it it it, uh, it requires an initial effort hey, you need investment to build this rim database and then of course on top of that you can quickly build new databases but that's a long term vision and I think a lot of companies will then say well just go for you know we just need this at the moment we don't need this whole RIM database and that's why you'll end up with the refined let's say the refined model database which are already in a certain domain and are and use more ad hoc techniques to get uh, to get to the uh, uh, the message but if I had the money and time definitely uh, the RIM database yeah but on the other hand um you have some experience with uh, vendors and also hospitals that started implementing maybe one or two messages and just use the, let's say, template approach. But then they found out that, to their surprise, the clinical people were looking at those models and they were going like, well, actually, it's very nice. Maybe we need a more generalized approach. Uh, yeah. Could you tell something about that experience? Yes, um, I, I have coached uh, teams developing uh, health applications and you see that you'll, of course, they, they, they have to produce these messages and the developers at a certain moment, they say, you know, we really like this ID. This, this, this is a nice model and we like the, the thinking behind it. But then you have an IT department, just the, just the software engineers who say this is a, is a great ID. Now, that means that still you have the rest of the organization who don't realize that this is a good model. So there is no way to convince them that uh, maybe we should just throw away our original database and start anew with the RIM, uh, RIM database. Now what happened there is that at a certain moment we had to develop our own new messages. And we, so we took in uh, the modelers of the company who had been previously modeling the database. And when they got into modeling with HL7 uh, version 3, they said, you know, those domains and those messages, we, we really get a hang of it. This, this, is, this is okay, we can use this. Actually, this solves a few of the problems that we're having with our actual database. So you see the, the supporting base to change to a RIM database, it grows slowly into the company. At a certain moment, uh, at some strategic session or whatever, people start saying, yeah, maybe we should look 
at changing our whole database and, and get to uh, to RIM. So that's uh, that that's great news, I think, because uh, in the end, it saves you a lot of money that way. Uh, when one looks at uh, the current uh, technology uh, matrix, uh, which basically came out of some HR7 efforts. Um, you look basically at a reference model based approach and obviously the idea of having a reference model is not new and we've seen it elsewhere as well for example in 13606 and OpenEHR. So would you say that this same technology matrix would apply there as well? I'm pretty sure about it. Uh, in HL7 uh, version 3 we call it a RIM but it's a reference model anyway. and. Um, I really can't imagine why there would be a difference between the reference model for uh, 13606 or open AR and, um, and H73. So um, as a from an, from my from my point of view there is no difference. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure we can use all the techniques. I, I think uh, even many of the transformation techniques in other domains um, as well. I, and, and even outside the health domain, of course. I, I wouldn't know why this would be limited to, to health even. Yeah. Um, one thing about uh, the second dimension of the uh, RIMBA technology matrix, which is uh, user interfaces. Um, this was fairly recently added to the matrix as a new aspect. Um, now, basically, it allows for as a starting port for user interface generation, basically from any other point in the first dimension of the matrix. So, what would actually be normally be the way to generate a user interface? Ha, normally, well, I must say this is an area where where I've hardly seen a lot of experiences yet in in our in our partners and the people that I talk to. So, normally would be a, would be a hard thing to define. I'd say, but I'm. Um, I'm a more. Um, I've been in the, in the bronze for some time, so I'm into those object models. I'd say that we first transform into an object model, and then from the object model you go to the user interface. But I know that some people are doing um, translations directly from the, the 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 message into the user interface. Um, how this, how one would do that, uh, also for for um, receiving data and validating it, uh, is, uh, is is I think quite. Um, it's quite difficult. So I think the, the, the object, the, the object model plays an important role here. So the, the normal way, in my view, would be um, first to an object model and then into the, um, into the, uh, the user interface. Well, Ewout, uh, thank you very much for those uh, insightful comments and obviously for originally uh, publishing uh, the matrix. Um, are there any things you'd like to ask of our viewers? Well, we have a matrix now and um, we need to fill it. Uh, that not only means that, uh, well, that, that means that on, and on every square we'll need to tell people what are the good things to start out from there and the bad things. And also for every transition from, from square to square we'll need to, to tell uh, people what kind of techniques are there to get from square to square. And to do this we need quite a lot of experiences collected and to write them down. So I, I, I really like to, uh, to invite the visitors to, uh, to, to give their experiences to us um, and uh, just email us or, or put them on the wiki and uh, um, we'll put them in some form that, uh, that in a structured form on the matrix. So I'd, I'd really like to encourage everybody to exchange experiences because there's only very few of us at this moment who, uh, who do this. So, uh, Let's share ideas.